Hi, I'm Steve Simpson, Professor of Pulmonary and Critical Care at the University of Kansas and Director of our Medical Intensive Care Units at the University of Kansas Hospital. And I'm Arup Pal, Associate Professor of Internal Medicine at KU and a hospitalist at the University of Kansas Hospital. We're here to talk about sepsis, life-threatening organ dysfunction due to a dysregulated host response to infection. By the end of this video, we want you to understand that severe sepsis is more common than you might think that it is highly deadly unless it's treated rapidly and aggressively, and it's frequently overlooked and not treated. I'm an intensivist at a university hospital, so I see sepsis and septic shock on a daily basis, as it should be, but how common is it elsewhere? Very common. Not a day goes by that we don't see a patient that presents with sepsis. In our clinics, outside the hospital, and in the hospital itself, patients are presenting more and more often. Does it happen in nursing homes, do you think? happens everywhere. Um, uh, and in the clinics and nursing homes, um, patients uh, at home develop symptoms of sepsis. And because patients tend to want to not come to the emergency room, they wait. And uh, with sepsis, the challenge is it can progress pretty rapidly. I read that about half of all the people with sepsis come to the emergency room in an ambulance. Does that square with your experience? That, that seems about right. And we're getting more and more information and in understanding this complex condition. So the more information that we can gather, the better we can understand. But to be clear, patients can present in any place at any time. Is it a pretty deadly condition? Very scary, very deadly. Um, thousands of patients in the United States die uh, throughout the years. And we under-recognize it, so we really don't appreciate how many patients do die from this condition. Yeah, historically speaking, sepsis has killed about 30 to 50 percent, or a third to a half of everyone that gets it. That's the best estimates that we have right now, but as we get more information, we'll find out how deadly this condition is and um, hopefully how we can better recognize it. I've also read that it kills just as many people as acute heart attacks. In the state of Kansas, that is what our data shows, is that patients, as many patients die of sepsis uh, as uh, acute MIs. In fact, we think there may be as many as 20,000 cases of severe sepsis every year in Kansas, and about seven or eight people a day die across our state. So listen, if it's so common, do we have a test to diagnose it? It's the challenge of sepsis. There's no one single test that defines sepsis. Um, uh, in addition to routine tests, there are some tests that co uh, combine to help us recognize it, uh, but no one single test can define sepsis. Yeah, in fact, I believe that we need to use certain specific criteria, clinical features about patients, and so we're going to talk about those in the next video, I think. What about treatment? Is it like really rocket science, how you treat sepsis? The good news is the information we have available right now shows that with simple uh, measures, we can save lives and improve outcomes. Right, just some antibiotics and fluids seem to do the trick a lot of times, don't they? Yep, the key is recognition and then early treatment. Yeah, so do we have, I think we're about out of time to talk about that. Yeah, I think that is all the time we have for this video. We've talked about how common severe sepsis is, how deadly it is, and how it tends to be overlooked by a lot of providers. Please join us for our next conversation when we talk about how to recognize severe sepsis. For the University of Kansas Hospital, I'm Steve Simpson with Arup Powell, and we want to help you stop sepsis.